I said it before and I'll say it again. Wireless power transfer is awesome. I mean look, I can power this LED with energy transmitted through thin air. Which I think is always an eye catcher. Of course when it comes to efficiency, then wireless power transmission is certainly far from ideal. But even with that flaw, there exists tons of wireless phone chargers and also electric toothbrushes that utilize this technology. I was and still am so fascinated by this, that I created two videos about the subject, which you should definitely check out. So of course, I was searching for the next wireless power transfer topic that I could cover in a video. But the most interesting feedback I got from viewers so far, was to build a wireless charging system. That is too simple though, since I already built a full bridge inverter, which in combination with commercial wireless power transfer coils, can transmit quite a bit of power. So all I had to add to the system was a rectifier and converter circuits. And bada boom bada bang, we got a wireless charging system. That means the quest for a good topic was still on. Until I finally found out that at MIT, they were able to transmit 60 watts of power with an efficiency of 40% over a distance of 2 meters. And I thought to myself, challenge accepted. So in this video, I'm going to conduct a few rather interesting experiments. In order to not only see how far I'm able to transmit power wirelessly, but also to discover more about this technology and its limitations. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Altium. They offer probably the most professional PCB designer software on the market. That comes with all the bells and whistles you could ever need in order to create professional PCB designs. And right now you can even test their software for free by following the link in the video description. So why not give it a try yourself? First off, there are two big parts that make up a wireless power system. There is for one the power electronics, which let an alternating current flow through the primary coil in order to create the magnetic fields. And then there is the transmitter and receiver coil system. So let's firstly focus on the power electronics part, for which I previously built this full bridge inverter, which as you can see, can already create a sinusoidal current and voltage through the primary coil resonance circuits. So everything is perfect, right? Well, not really. Since I didn't add a heatsink to the MOSFETs, the achievable frequency range is also limited and holy moly, I really do not want to create such a complicated circuit again. That is why I came up with this easier to build one, which comes with a few changes. First off, it is only a half bridge, which either connects the coil system to the supply voltage or ground. Thus, this new system will not be as powerful as the full bridge inverter, but still good enough for tons of experiments. The MOSFETs are controlled by an easy to use MOSFET driver with integrated bootstrapping, who gets its PWM control signal from an Arduino microcontroller. I aimed for a frequency range between around 80 kHz and 200 kHz and created the signal by utilizing the timer 1 of the microcontroller through those lines of codes. I also added an OLED screen to see the current frequency we're at and a potentiometer to fine adjust it. And best of all, it only took me around 3 hours to build the circuit on a perf board. And with the power electronics out of the way, let's focus on the biggest question. What kind of coil should we use? And with what kind, I mean how big should its diameter be and how many windings should it come with. And no, using the commercial coils for long distances is certainly not possible. Now to get an idea how the diameter and number of windings play a role, we have to go back to the theory, where we learned that the loss factor decreases when the product of the coupling factor and coil quality increases. Sadly, the coupling factor will always be low, and get even worse when we put more distance between the coils. 
Therefore, we have to keep the coil quality as high as possible. And as you can see in this formula, the amount of windings and the diameter play a super important role. But of course, we cannot simply increase those values indefinitely, because then there will be a bigger length of the coil and higher resistance, which would decrease the Q factor. So there is a sweet spot we have to find. But for my first test, I simply went with two coil pairs with a diameter of 20cm and a winding number of 6 and 12. I utilized stranded 1.5 square millimeter wire to form the coils, which was not easy to do even when using a jig made out of thicker solid copper wire. But nevertheless, after a few trials and errors, I got my four coils. So let's start with the six turn ones. They come with an inductance of around 15 microhenry. And of course, like with the commercial coils, we have to build up a resonant circuit with them by adding a capacitor, so that the current and voltage values through them maximize at resonant frequency. The formula for this frequency looks like this. And here is the problem, since I do not have a value for the capacitor nor the frequency yet. Now when looking at the formula of the coil quality, you might be thinking, why not just set the frequency super high? And I would have to say that with higher frequencies, we get problems like the skin effects, which will increase our resistance and thus lower the coil quality. Once again, there is a sweet spot, which was easy to find with the commercial coil due to its data sheets. But for my DIY coil, I would have to determine the best coil quality value experimental, by for example creating dozens of resonant circuits and measuring their damping. And honestly, nobody got time for that. So I simply set a frequency of 120 kHz and thus calculated a capacitance of around 170 nanofarads. I soldered the closest capacitor value in series to the transmitter coil and in parallel to the receiver coil. As a load, I went with a simple 0.5 watt LED. And after positioning both coils on my makeshift distance shifting contraption, it was time to set the exact resonance frequency and do some testing. The maximum distance at which the LED still lit up was around 34 cm at which point we could obviously increase the input voltage in order to boost the resonance transmitter voltage and thus illuminating the LED at bigger distances. But for all the tests I will keep the input voltage at 5 volts. So for the next test I replaced the LED with a full bridge rectifier, positioned the receiver with a distance of 20cm from the transmitter and measured the received rectified voltage. It seems to be around 10.8 volts top. And last but not least, I measured the short circuit current after the rectifier, which was around 12 milliamps. Those measurements will be the base for the upcoming comparison tests. So time to switch to the 12 turn coils, which reached a bigger distance of around 46 cm and a higher voltage at 20 cm but their short circuit current was only 7.5 milliamps, which was quite a bit less than with 6 turns. It seems like making more turns is not the best idea. So maybe a bigger diameter is the solution, which is why next I created a coil pair with a diameter of 30 cm and 6 turns as well. And would you look at that, this coil pair reached the best distance of 50 cm got the same voltage at 20cm as the 12 turn one and features the highest short circuit current of 45mA so far. To improve the characteristics of this coil design even more, I thought about trying out high frequency LITS wire, which is the stuff commercial wireless coils are made of and are used to basically keep the skin effect as small as possible. And guess what, I got myself this expensive wire tried it out and found out that the results were worse than without the LITS wire, because its cross section was smaller and thus its overall resistance was bigger. So even though I wasted a bit of money here, it was time to hook up the best performing 30cm coil pair to my new air cooled full bridge inverter, 
and see how much power I can transmit how far. And I was quite happy when I saw that I could light up LEDs which were 1 meter away. Even a 12 volt fan was happy to spin for me at a distance of around 50 cm. But the fan was using a received power of 0.5 watts, while I was pumping in around 27 watts for the transmitter electronics. So we reached an efficiency of around 1.85% which is far away from the MIT's 40%. And when it comes to transmitting around 5 watts of power, then my system can only do it over a distance of 10 cm, which once again is far away from MIT's results. So this experiment was a big fail, right? Well, not really. Because through those experiments we learned that a high frequency, not many windings, a big coil diameter and a big cross section are most important for good wireless power systems. And when looking at the MIT websites we can see a beefy 5 turns coil with a diameter of 61cm which operates in the megahertz region. So my conclusions are definitely correct. I simply didn't have the time and resources to create such a system. But it was still important to learn more about such wireless power systems. Because I bet there will be more applications popping up for it in the future. With that being said, thanks for watching. Consider supporting me through Patreon if you want me to produce more videos like this. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.